Okay, now me. So next question. Um, Susan, you talked okay. about your most memorable experiences with the Cambodians and how you enjoyed picking them up and picking the, the kids up and getting lost, but just having a good time with that. Pastor, what about your most memorable experiences with the Cambodians, um, either within the congregation and outside the congregation? Well, it must be the consistency of participating in the community and grow of the church. That's very memorable. First, I mentioned the 78 of them that got together on Easter Sunday at Wheeler Air Force Base. And what was memorable about that? What happened at Wheeler Air Force, or Wheeler? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Hank Noor was the presenter for the University of Hawaii's Audiovisual Department as a special guest, and we piggybacked on that. And he was very magnificent in his presentation on that Easter Sunday afternoon. Uh, that was such a high moment because there were 78 Cambodians at that gathering. I remember that Easter Sunday. There were a lot of Sundays. I and remember that dinner, Sunday. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was a big event. Yeah. You'd also mentioned about uh, some of the children that you have sponsored, um, the girls that have gone off to receiving scholarships. Uh, can you well, we, uh, expand on that? Katia Fong was our poster child because she was the first one to go on a scholarship to our Redeemer Lutheran High School, graduated, I think, Valor Victorian, and then Shortly thereafter, she went to Missouri to... No, no, not Indiana. Indiana, right. <laughs> Indiana, Bell Paraiso. Okay. And had a scholarship there. So, I guess to this day, she lives in the vicinity of Bell Paraiso and had a very good experience, meaningful watershed shed experience, which influenced her life. Because she also was kind of an influence on the girls that followed her. They could look to her and recognize that she had been the patriarch of the group because she was able to not only earn a scholarship, but she was also able to maintain a good grade point average. So, What about the boys? The boys, well, <laughs> the boys never did as well as the girls. <laughs> the girls were so <laughs> successful. So we never had a boy on scholarship, and uh, it just was kind of, you know, downer not to be able to say that the boys are focused. The, the girls, they, they knew where they were going. They knew what they needed and wanted to find success. And for both of you, would you sponsor us all over again? Why or why not? Oh, absolutely. You enriched our lives. Our congregations and the individual people, it uh, being a military family who had none of their own family around them, uh, knew the plight that you were in and enjoyed very much uh, being friends of yours, giving their kids toys and outgrown clothing down to the Cambodian children. It enriched our lives very much. And how did you and the congregation and, uh, acquire the resources to do what you did? Free will offering of goods and services on the part of the haves to the have-nots. And of course the Lutheran Church Immigration and Refugee Service was an established organization that provided all of the inspiration and wisdom that we needed to know in order to have a family. There were a lot of legal implications and you had to follow it to a strict order. 
That was protection both for the immigrant families and it was also protection for the families that were well established in the community that they didn't particularly like change. And this was change for them, having new people from Asia come, live and work in this community of Littlestown and Bloomsburg and Honolulu. <laughs> and Susan, you had mentioned about the, mil the uniqueness of being a military family, uh, being in the military and not having your family with you. Um, how did that uh, influence um, the contributions towards the Cambodian refugees? I think I just kind of mentioned that, that uh, uh, you were a family that had no family of your own around you, and so we had a lot in common in that way. I enjoyed very much uh, having new friends in the same situation. And I think it on over intermission, you had mentioned that because they didn't have their immediate nephews and nieces with them, they had the outgrown children's clothing and toys that they freely and had donated. And shared, yes. And shared. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was such a godsend, the dresses that we received and the toys. It was, wow. <laughs> We enjoyed wearing them. And we enjoyed learning about your food. And when we would have these picnics and parties, uh, we would get to taste Asian food and enjoy it. Now, what type of ongoing contact do you still have with the families? We get together as often as we can. Social gatherings. It's built around the possibility of reenacting what once was, because Pearl Harbor Lutheran Church no longer exists. It became deactivated when there was a drawdown in the military. So that phase of the ministry is accomplished. So the residue of that is that uh, we miss each other, and whenever there's an opportunity or an occasion to justify. Uh, changing our direction and getting back together. We're Baptisms, back. weddings, <laughs> wonderful things. Funerals, yeah. anniversaries. If you could give advice to the second generation American Cambodians, so basically the generation X and Ys, um, and to future American Cambodians, what would that advice be? What, what would you like to share? The key to success for them, as for everyone, is education. Education is the bottom line. What you're able to acquire in your mind that's conducive to enriching your spirit and your soul uh, gives you uh, the stimulus to carry on and be motivated to do better and for your family to do better. Susan, would you like to add to anything? No. Is there something that you'd like to share? No, uh, because I too am far away from my family. I <laughs> growing up in Ohio, my husband Pennsylvania, a son in California, a son in uh, all over the world <laughs> as a pilot. So you have to remember your roots and appreciate the present and try to keep in contact in the future. All important in life. Well, we're only, my am only a third generation. My grandparents came from Europe. So uh, it's an immigrant nation and it's a nation that uh, tries to welcome people from all over the world who have a desire to better their life. Be a good citizen and vote. It's very important to vote. 
participate in the political process. It's a democratic republic nation, and uh, there are representatives of the government that should be able to speak for each person in the community. And the only way to do that intelligently is to, for the constituency of the community to have a voting record so that the person in the legislative branch of our government recognizes that their job is to help the constituency to put them in the office. Last question, but certainly not least, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't discussed? Well, just that we're very thankful that this was an experience in our lives and one which we treasure. Yes, we're rich because of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're grateful that we had the privilege of meeting the Cambodians, learning about Cambodia, and loving the Cambodians. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Satu. That's it. We did it. We didn't even move.